I'm not sure when I'm gonna watch it. I just know I'm gonna watch it. So today's one of those weird days where I have a topic idea, but I don't know how I want to pursue it. I just know that I want to talk about it. I'm just not sure what part to talk about. So today's topic in a very roundabout way is going to be writing in general, um, mostly mine <laughs> or the lack thereof and the how it came to be process, I suppose. You know, for the longest time, I didn't know how to describe this, but it's apparently steepling your hands. So it's like, oh, you learned something new. I don't remember where I read it. And then I'm like, what does that mean? And I just imagined like the person holding their fingers just so, and I was like, oh, that's what it's called. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, I have been wanting to be a writer since, oh, the fifth grade. Ever since that one writing assignment, I still have that book that I made too. Uh, our assignment was to write a book, write and illustrate a book, like a story. So naturally it's not, you know, this big thick book that, you know, is like, oh, look at what she's done. Oh, oh. No, it's like a couple of pages and it's this little short story with terrible illustrations because I don't practice my drawing. So I'm not a very good artist, but I can mingle the words, even though the story was a little weird. From what I remember, I, I don't know if I have it easy access to. I just know I still have it because I found it recently and I was like, hey, look. It's my first book I ever wrote and quote unquote finished. So that was probably the only silver lining from going to being the popular one in public school to being the outcast in private school. That that was the silver lining that year in lieu of like all of the terribleness and all of the mm, having to like figure this out and relearn stuff and go from not knowing a lot of stuff to knowing stuff. And it, it's really super weird because the public school that I went to was like a grade or two behind the present grade of the private school. So I almost got pushed back a year because of it, but luckily they didn't. So I don't know if that would have helped any or not. <laughs> Cause that was also the year that I got my glasses and uh, they're a lot nerdier than these. I mean, these are kind of terrible and I need to, you know, change them out. But the other ones were like those big round ones, basically Harry Potter before I think Harry Potter was even super popular. It may have been published, but it wasn't super popular yet. So I had these big round bifocals, you know, going back from spring break and it was just like, ugh. Yeah, that, that, that year was, mm, no. The only upside, as I mentioned, was that I learned how much I love to write. Like before, I never really had a, an assignment to do writing and such. So this was like the first time that I was like, okay, th this is something different and interesting and cool. So it was different and interesting and cool. And I don't think I got struck by that bug very hard like it was still kind of sort of there and I think that's when I started telling stories to my cousins because back then we got together a lot more often than we do now which is sad but you know life gets in the way and working all the time gets in the way because life and bills but yeah so I, it was just one of those things where you just slowly developed an interest into it and then you slowly developed wanting to do more with it and I think that's probably the turning point from when I went from wanting to be a singer-songwriter to wanting to become a writer. It took a little while, I think, because I wasn't writing like every single day until some years later. I don't remember exactly. Pretty sure it was when I was homeschooled. So at least two grades after the fifth grade because I was homeschooled during my whole entire high school life. So this is kind of like a about me that you probably maybe never heard. I don't know if I've told this story before, but here it is. So yeah, uh, once I was homeschooled, I had a lot more free time because then we didn't take hours to get to and from a private school. We didn't take as much time, you know, 
going from class to class, messing about with lockers, trying to help people who supposedly hated you because their locker wouldn't unlock because they couldn't remember how to do it. So that, that was a weird, that was a very weird, okay, that actually happened in the private school. I don't remember if it was fifth grade or sixth grade, but the popular girl had it out for me. I don't know what I did except for, you know, being the outcast newbie. So that, that's probably all it was really. Um, and probably because I was visibly upset that I wasn't the popular one, I had a little bit of an attitude in public school apparently. So yeah, it's a good thing that I'm not there anymore because who knows, who knows what I would be like now. Probably not like this, probably not. You probably wouldn't get this K, you'd get a different one. So yeah, no, the that scenario was weird. We were like, I think it was between classes or just before PE, I don't remember which one it was. But I was at my locker, um, you know, putting stuff away or taking stuff out. I think maybe it was the end of the day. Maybe. I don't remember. I just remember that one of the uh, girls who was BFFs with the ringleader, um, she tried to subtly talk to me. Like, she knew she wasn't supposed to because it was an unbroken rule or something. I don't know. Ugh, girls. But yeah, she was all like, I need help and stuff like this. And I don't remember the word for it. I just remember she couldn't get her locker open. So I had to help her because I was nice and helped her out, even though, you know, and I think that's, I don't know. There's just something about that scenario was really weird and interesting. Totally off topic, but you know, it's me. <laughs> so yeah, it was probably around high school, oh, I don't know how old I was or what grade I was in. I just remember that that was when we had our first or second, maybe, I don't know. Cause I think we had a Windows 95 computer and then we had a 98 and then we had the Barbie and Hot Wheels computers. I think might be wrong. But I remember those existing and I remember vaguely playing on one. So I, I may not be too far off. I think my brother had the Hot Wheels one because he had the cool like construction worker one where you put like this, the console like on top of your keyboard and it hit the buttons just right or something. It was outrageously cool back then. And it's still kind of cool when you think about it now because there was this piece that you put on your keyboard and it just worked. So that was cool. Uh, Lego games. Oh my goodness. There were Lego games on the computer and there was one that was really cool. I still remember it. It was a railroad one. It's awesome. But yeah, so I had a Windows XP computer, you know, big monitor thing, floppy disk drive. I have floppies and I saved my stories to floppies. I remember that. And yeah, so before I had the computer though, before I started writing like every day on the computer, like nonstop, every single day listening to music and playing solitaire when I wasn't writing because that's the little thing. I do that sometimes still, so that's funny. But before then, before I had my own computer in my own room, I had spiral notebooks up the wazoo, just filled with stories. Some of them, I, st I still have most of them actually because I'm a hoarder and I just really can't grasp the idea of getting rid of this stuff, so I still have it. And it's just one of those things, you know, where you, you kind of want to look back on it. So you keep it for that moment when you're like, you know what, what was that story like? I want to go back and read it. And so you go back and read it and you go, oh my goodness gracious me, I wrote like, ah, it's one of those things. So in the process of all of this going on, I decided, hey, Fuyang being a singer, a songwriter, and all that sort of jazz. I did go through a poetry phase. I did go through poetry phase. I still have my poetry book somewhere. I don't remember where. It's one of those composition notebooks and I had all my poetry in that. So yeah, I did go through that phase. Like any other teenage girl, I'm pretty sure. And boy. But uh, yeah, so... So to better myself, I remember now, to better myself in my writing career, I decided to read some how-to books. So this was back when I went to the library on my own, in my own car. Car. This is a big old van that I would constantly forget to turn the headlights off so the battery would die. Um, one of those things. 
So I would go to the library every week and, you know, I was constantly, I was like on buddy terms with the librarians at this point because every single week I did it. And, you know, I had my books on how to write. And finally, I think they started picking up on it. So they're like, oh, how's your book coming along and blah, blah, blah. So I feel really bad now because I still haven't published anything. <laughs> So I haven't been to that library in years. Oh my goodness. I wonder if those librarians are still there. They were really sweet. Yeah, so I would get, you know, how to write character emotions, how to write, you know, uh, horror, how to write science fiction, how to write fantasy, how to write detective and mystery stuff, you know, basic how to. Except I never picked up Stephen King's on writing. That was one of the things that I never picked up. It was just, you know, how to do this, how to do that, and then I think eventually I started reading, what was it? It was like a writer's handbook, but it was like a yearly sort. It was really thick. It was like Reader's Digest or something. Writer's Digest, maybe. that Maybe that's what it was. Writer's Digest. I had a whole bunch of those magazines and stuff, too. I don't think I ever really actually read most of them. I just kind of was like, ooh, I need this because I will better myself as a writer. I was still writing, mind you. Still writing, so I didn't let that down. Um, but no, it's just, there was something wrong though, because as I was reading like these how to writes and stuff like this and stuff like that, something just slowly started creeping into my mind of you'll never be this good. You'll never, you know, reach this point. You'll never blah, blah, blah. You'll never this, you'll never that, you know, the typical, you'll never be as good as blah, blah, blah. Even though I was still writing and stuff, but I don't know, there was just something about it and it just made me feel bleh. Like I couldn't manage this goal in life that I had. I just could not do it at all. So ever so slowly, I don't know when the point started. Cause even when I got my first job, I would write at work. Like I was the hostess after a while of waitressing and there would be lulls. So I would have these blank pieces of paper and I would just write on it like, Really finely and small, too, sometimes. And I would just write. Uh, I don't think those stories ever went anywhere than a couple of pages. But yeah, so it just slowly fizzled and fizzled and fizzled. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was when I had to switch jobs because the first one closed down. And then I went to the movie theater business. There was just something that happened and I just stopped writing. Like, I just outright stopped. I didn't write anymore. I like thought a little bit about it, but I just, I, I didn't do it. I would play video games. I would watch movies, you know, still on and on, go to work. Never dwelled upon writing until, oh gosh, what was it? I don't remember what exactly, but you know, I started making YouTube videos during the first job and then that's when I met, you know, Britt and Dylan and Kyo Chan and a few other people that I'm still kind of chatting with, but they don't make content anymore, I don't think. So, and then there was just something that just, I don't know, it... Oh, I did a Star Wars fan fiction on my MySpace blog. <laughs> that was amusing. It was really bad and terrible, as most fan fiction can be every so often. But uh, yeah, and I didn't get to save it because MySpace changed their ways. So thanks, MySpace. You're a trooper. I think I saved some of it because I had like this gnawing feeling that doomsday was coming because new MySpace. Oh my goodness. But yeah, no, it was terrible. Yeah, I have in my mind that I want a female villainess, but I don't want her to be too evil, but I want her to be really cool. So she was in like, like weird spot that I typically put my female villains in. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know what was the turning point, but something like kick-started me back into writing. And I'm pretty sure it was the introduction of NaNoWriMo to myself. Um, I don't remember who introduced it to me, but I'm pretty sure it was one of the YouTubers that I followed. Um, oh, I don't remember her name. She actually, like, published one of her NaNoWriMo books, but I don't remember her name. Uh, she was really cool. She did, uh, YouTube videos for a while, and then I don't think she does anymore. But yeah, I got introduced into NaNoWriMo, and I'm like, you know what? Why not? Let's try this thing. So, first couple of years, didn't go anywhere. 
but the more I went at it, the more determined I became. And then it just like crumbled because I procrastinate a lot. And <laughs> I just easily put stuff off until the final moment. And yeah, that doesn't work very well. So that, that was pretty bad until 2015. Um, when I finished my very first successful NaNoWriMo book. And I still haven't finished editing it. Sorry, I just like, bah, did that. Yeah, I, I finished the book. Uh, finished the book. Yeah, it was one of those where I was going more for the words, not the completion of the story. So it's kind of like rushed at the very end because I was just like in this adrenaline fueled rampage that, you know, oh, I'm almost at 50,000 words. I should stop the book then. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Unless your book is actually going to finish at 50K, don't ever make the same mistake I did because now I have to redo I mean, I have to redo most of the whole book because going through it, I'm like, you know what? I don't like this and I don't like that. The problem with me though is it's so bad. I just want to like chunk the manuscript and just start from scratch, which is a bad idea and a good idea all at the same time. Because this one, I need to completely rewrite most of it because I'm changing up characters, I'm changing up backstories, and I'm changing up the ending to make it better and stuff. So, yeah. So in the meantime, I'm kind of putting it off because it's such a big project. <laughs> yeah. So I've done like little stories here and there and I haven't edited those. So I'm just, I'm just terrible. I'm the worst procrastinating author who ever did live. Maybe, I don't know, probably not. There's probably somebody worse out there, but I feel like I'm pretty bad at it. So, you know. But yeah, that, that is roughly me in a nutshell for the authorness. Um, oh, during high school, I did actually get another writing project assignment thingy where you had to write like a story. It was for uh, English, which was probably the only subject that I actually liked because <laughs> I wasn't really interested in science and history. I'm more interested in now than I was back then. And I remember nothing of history. So don't dare ask me anything. <laughs> I won't remember any of it. I don't remember any of it, which is kind of sad. But uh, yeah, English was probably the only subject that I was mildly interested in. So yeah, that I do still have. That finished project I do have, and it was actually pretty good. And it was the first attempt I had made in writing a creepy story. Like I've never had the intention of writing a creepy story. It was either science fiction, fantasy, or maybe like a mystery sort of book. And never once in my life did I think I would write horror, which is funny because the NaNoWriMo book that I finished is a science fiction horror. And I've created a very rough sketch of a galaxy around it. So it was one of those things pretty cool, I guess, sort of, yeah. So that is it for me this week. No, just kidding. Ha ha ha. Tomorrow's Saturday, so it's not the end of the week. Um, that is it for me today, I suppose. Um, if you guys have any more questions about my writing life history thing, I don't know what to call this. I'm the worst writer ever. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in more or you have questions about more, you can always leave it in the comment section below. I try to respond to everybody's comments because I don't have that many, so it's easy to do right now. <laughs> it's true! But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you next time. Bye! Maybe you can find more